Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're talking to Michigan Hyperloop. Sam, the project manager and lead, will tell us a little bit how they want to advance Hyperloop technology, create individual member growth for all their team members, and develop opportunities for future Wolverine success. Michigan Hyperloop has been around since 2015 for the original Texas A&M design competition. They've been through many different iterations of their pod and they're working really hard for competition three. So hi, Sam. Welcome to In the Hyperloop. Thanks so much for joining hi. today. Hi, it's great to be here. So I mentioned briefly in the introduction that you're with Michigan Hyperloop and your project lead. Can you tell me a little bit more about Michigan Hyperloop and, and your role and how it fits in, in your guys' mission? Yeah, of course. So uh, as you said, I'm the project lead for Michigan Hyperloop. And Michigan Hyperloop is a team of undergraduate students working to develop the technology for Hyperloop so that hopefully we can someday make it a reality and bring it to people all across the world, uh, connect people more quickly. So as a part of our, our mission, that's one of them to develop the technology, but then also is to cultivate individual member growth, as well as develop opportunities for future Wolverine success. So in my role, I get to do a lot of that um, because I get to work with everybody individually, make sure that they're, have, they have all the resources that they need to, so that they can be effective in helping us uh, address this this challenge. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it's it's a kind of a holistic experience. You know, you're advocating Absolutely. for new technology, but you're also personal growth, and that's definitely. I, I really like that. Um, so, how did you become interested in Hyperloop or the SpaceX Pod competition? I've been in, involved with it pretty much since the beginning. Um, when I got to the University of Michigan, I was looking for a project team to be involved with. Mm -hmm. And there were so many great opportunities, um, but it wasn't until I found Hyperloop that I was really gripped by something. It was innovative, it was new, uh, it was really exciting. There was a lot of momentum growing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of my good friends had gotten involved actually first semester. I was like, hey, this is a really cool project, should definitely get involved. So I applied at the time, it was, it was so new that there was an application for it. Oh, wow. Somehow they let me on the team, which was exciting as a second semester freshman. Uh, and from there, I've been involved with it ever since. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, um, you got in on the ground floor. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this is kind of a you know, futuristic question, but how do you think Hyperloop might affect you know, urban communities or rural? or uh, how, how do you see it in the future? It's a question that a lot of people are asking, especially those that aren't so involved with the, the technology part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me personally, I definitely see it connecting metropolitan areas like maybe for us like Detroit and, and Chicago or Detroit in New York City, places like that, which is really exciting for us. Connect Michigan a little bit more to the rest of the country, but then also across the world too in, in Europe, for example, they already have a really great uh, uh, public transportation system. But I'd like to see that kind of be reinvigorated here in the U.S. because mm -hmm. We're at a time where, where the environment is a really important thing that we need to address. So this would be a potentially great way to, to do that. Yeah, as the airplane flies over. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was kind of thing, wasn't it? That, that was perfect timing. Um, yeah. So, you know, Sam, in your role as project lead, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've faced um, over your time with the team or in working in engineering? Yeah, there, I mean, there have been a plenty of challenges, technical uh, challenges, but I don't deal too much with those. Mm -hmm. What's been the most interesting challenge for me has been working with the, all the different kinds of people that we have on the team yeah. because everybody responds differently to different approaches. Um, if you need to try to talk to somebody about trying to get something done, mm -hmm. they're going to respond differently depending on how you address them, how you talk to them, how you try to push them to do the best that they can. Mm -hmm. So trying to learn how each person acts differently and is going to respond differently has been a challenge for me, but I've learned so much from it. And it's been exciting. Well, <laughs> but oh yeah. oh, I was just going to say, and then in addition to that, I mean, we're full-time students um, and on top of trying to do this and trying to learn how to be competent uh, adults. <laughs> so there's a lot of learning that's going on across all different spectrums of all of our lives. So trying to be somebody that can help all the students on the team to do that has definitely been a challenge. It's it's not easy, um, and you know this is it's a 
it's an exciting opportunity, but then once you take a step back and you're like, oh, I really have to commit so many hours and, you know, or, yes. you know, you don't even notice how many hours it's taking up in your life. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it really, it's really crazy. You, you go through a week and then you look back and you're like, wait a minute, I spent that much time. On <laughs> but it, um, it goes by really quickly. So that's good. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, definitely. It's exciting all the way across the board. So yeah. it's a good, a good time. That's cool. Um, so we've hit on, you know, the challenges that you face on a daily basis, you know, what yeah. do you like working about, um, in, in the Hyperloop community or in your role in particular? Well, for the Hyperloop community, it's probably one of the most exciting ones that I could have had the opportunity to be a part of because it's new. It is, it's exciting. Momentum is growing for it. It's becoming more of a, a household term Hyperloop. Mm -hmm. Um, there are still a lot of people that aren't too familiar with it, but being able to, bring this concept, talk to other people about it, and start to spread the word about it. That has been one of the most exciting and rewarding parts of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my role, I get to do a lot of that. I get to talk to a lot of people outside of the team, in the community. Um, so being able to, to be on the front of that has been really exciting. That's cool. Yeah, and you, you've done a very good job communicating. And um, I've seen an interview of yours that I'll well, post in the description below. So good job communicating uh, yeah. to schools and various groups. And yeah, doing the outreach. many people interested in this as we possibly can. Yeah. So do you see Hyperloop replacing uh, vehicle trips or like a weekend getaway trip? Or how do, how do you see, how, how would you use Hyperloop if you could, if you could go somewhere? <laughs> it's going to be really exciting to see, especially with all of the autonomous vehicles that are coming out and things like that, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to get rid of individual vehicles. Um, but it's definitely going to connect cities more easily, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the U.S., for example, where people don't really take trains very much anymore between like Chicago, Detroit, those places. Mm -hmm. uh, so being able to get to those places in, I don't know, like a half an hour, for example, rather than having to take the several hour car ride is going to yeah. be pretty fantastic. So I'm really excited for that. Um, personally, I think it'd be really cool to see a track go from Grand Rapids all the way up to Traverse City, for example. Oh, really? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I like to spend a lot of time up there in northern Michigan, but um, it'll probably connect more metropolitan uh, mm -hmm. communities more quickly than, than something like that. But maybe someday. Well, I mean, th maybe that's the brilliance about Hyperloop because you can have like a little tiny spur that goes to a rural destination. <laughs> and, that would be uh, fantastic. That would be awesome. You know, if you could ask Elon Musk any question, um, Hyperloop related or not, you know, what would it be? <laughs> well, with such a visionary like Elon Musk is, I, I'd like to see what it is that inspires him, where he gets these great ideas from, but then more importantly, what he's done to be successful in doing that, because mm -hmm. there are so many of us on the team um, that would love to do something like him, make a huge difference really start this new technology so seeing what he has done and being able to learn from that would be would be awesome that'd be really interesting yeah i it's he's a very fascinating guy and um, oh yeah <laughs> all, of, all of these passions are somehow converging to one area so <laughs> yes yes and it'll be exciting to see how it continues to go in that direction yeah yeah so sam thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day um and joining me you know for our viewers if they want to learn more how is the best way we can we can contact you know Michigan Hyperloop or where is the best place to go? Well, the best place to go is to at michiganhyperloop.com. There are links to all of our social media on there, as well as a lot of information about the team, about Hyperloop technology, about our pod specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can just Google or, or search uh, yep. Michigan Hyperloop, and, and you'll find us. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Have a good day. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me.